follow advice video. Uh, this time I'm talking about footprints. This arrangement is by Mike Tamero. It's really similar to the original footprints lead sheet by Wayne Shorter, except it adds in some different chords here, like going to the five, going to the G13 and having it here to do sort of a two five, fake two five movement. Then we have the five again, transition. This part is the same in the turnaround. Then we add the five as something else to, to put in there to change up the, the chords, the feel of it. The tune is basically um, an extended blues. If you count the measures, we have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And me saying it's a blues, I'm saying it's a blues because I can see a pattern of 1, 1, 4, 1, something different, 1. So that to me tells me it's a four, or uh, sorry, um, 12 bar blues. But it's also a lot faster. And the blues is almost felt, it's almost, it's in a different time signature for one, it's in three, four. And it's almost like each measure gets its own beat. It's almost like it's in six, eight time where there are six eighth notes per measure of space that could fit. So let's get to the notes. Um, instead of using your standard blues scale, you could, but this song, it's a little bit more modal. It Because of this chord at the beginning, the C minor 11 sounds like this. And that note up there is the 11th, it's the four. So when you're, when you're copying this, it sounds very open, it, but it doesn't have the kind of rub that you would typically hear on a blues. It's not that kind of blues, it's more serious, I guess I, you could say. And even in the melody, we have notes that aren't in there, or in the typical blues. This note. This is the six compared to the one. And this is actually from a mode. This mode is called Dorian, um, which means that you play a minor scale and then go up a whole step, half step, whole step. It's almost like a minor scale. A natural minor scale. This is Dorian. So it's really similar. The only note that's different is the six is natural. And it's in the melody. That's how I know that that note is good to use too. So I'm going to use this C Dorian scale for the first eight measures. And this G7 that's here, it's it's not really going to throw me. I can still use the same notes. I mean, I could I could use the notes for this, but it's a little bit advanced. Um, just to explain this chord here, it's a G7 major. So it's not major, but it's a dominant 7. And now we have a sharp 9, which is up here, and a sharp 5. This chord is very interesting. It's really pretty. It's actually called a altered chord. So this altered chord sounds really nice. And we have lots of these altered chords here. I just didn't write ALT because I want you to see how they're built. Now, what this means is that you could find these notes. You could find and identify G7, G, B, D, F, and those extra notes, sharp nine, which would be A sharp, sharp five, which would be D sharp. So you could lay those all on top of each other and you could find ways to harmonize them with the next chord. Then we have G to an, a C7, same chords. So instead of me going into depth, about what notes you should pick, those are the notes that are available there. You could also just stick to the to the um, Dorian. It's 
not so strong, but it would be okay because it happens so quickly. I mean, this is like half of a, this is a, a beat and a half. So one and, so one and two. Then this is and three and in this arrangement. Then we go to our F chord. And again, I would say an F Dorian, which is the first five notes of a minor scale. Natural six, flat seven. And we have the G7 chord there. And we go back to the C minor seven, or sorry, C minor 11. Then this is the fun part here. These chords are really interesting because it's not your typical turnaround. The first chord is a half diminished 7, meaning it's a minor 7 with a flat 5. That's what it sounds like. Then the next chord is an F7 with the sharp 11 and a 13. So, or it could be played very, very interesting, very colorful. Then we have this altered chord. That's an E dominant 7 with a sharp 9 and a sharp 5. Then we have an A7 with a sharp 5 and a sharp 9. back to this C11. So it's it's a little bit funky. So this part is the scariest part of the song if I were a soloist. And there's there's an easy thing to do. It's not 100% accurate and some notes might sound right. But you know what? Sometimes you can play the wrong thing and make it sound right just by using a bit of confidence. So your first chord, over that one, you could actually just play your C major. Because it works for most of these notes, it sounds okay. Even playing that um, F natural, which would be the natural of this note. Now we get to the next chord, the F13 sharp 11. And there's the sharp 11, which is the leading tone to C to the one. So the only difference between these two, F, this chord right here would be your, your first chord, your C11, C minor 11. the difference so it's basically just playing a this chord the one major set or one major then the next chord the next chord I'm just lowering the third do you hear it or in a different place Then our next chords, E7, no we're not going to do that one. Actually what we could do for this one is to make a little sequence out of it. And that's what we can do before the first two. So what I mean by a sequence is playing an idea and then just moving it down half steps. And what works pretty well is going our one, C to E, the three, just arpeggiating, then Sorry. So it's going to sound out. I could tell you what chords to play for every single one of these chords, but it might overwhelm you and it might overwhelm your thought processes. 
So instead of doing that, I think it's better to come up with a couple of tricks for the first two. Then we have these other chords. So you could do that. And then for these two, I would suggest because they're moving in fourths, because they're because of that chordal relationship, you can actually play what you're playing a half step lower. And you can get out there. You can come up with some ideas. Another idea you could do, going back to the C, this is your concert one. So the F7, sorry, F half diminished. Then you could play the same thing. One, three, one, six, then go down a half step. I know that note's wrong, but you could make it sound good. <laughs> then you go down a half step again. These notes are all okay. Then you do the same thing. Then you go down a half step. Then you resolve to the four which is the 11 of the one. So again, one, which would be C, E, C, A, one, three, one, six, down a half step, down a whole step, down another. So now you're a minor third down. Then you go down a half step again. So that's a sequence, that's how that works. And it, it, it works for this tune. I'm gonna play it in context with the solo and I'll add that idea in. Here we go. Here we go, here's that sequence. Gift it up a little bit. I'll take another turn. Here we go. And notice how sparse I am. There's that six. We have to change it there for the F11. Here we go. on the flat seven. I'll take one more time through. So hopefully you can hear these notes happening. So that last time through the sequence, that's a little bit mechanical and it sounds more like a, a drill. You'd want to make it more musical, but I just wanted to make sure you could hear those. And how they could function together. Well, I hope this was really helpful. Practice a lot and have fun.